I yield uh, two minutes to my very good friend, distinguished member of the Budget Committee, Mr. McClintock of California. The gentleman is recognized for two minutes. Mr. Speaker, for the first time in my 15 years in Congress, I will vote for a debt limit increase because for the first time, we have a bill that's serious about controlling the reckless spending that's destroying America's productivity and its prosperity. $4.8 trillion in savings. How could anyone who cares about the debt not vote for this measure? Now, the debt limit's there for a reason. If your family's living beyond its means and needs to raise its credit limit, it better sit down around the kitchen table and have a serious discussion over the circumstances that have gotten it into this mess and what steps it needs to take to get out. The debt limit's there to assure we have exactly that discussion as a nation. Now, the President and the Democrats across the aisle say they're not willing to engage in that discussion. Well, to coin a phrase, come on, man. When Bill Clinton lost the House in 1994, he reached across the aisle to work with House Republicans. Together, a Democrat President and a Republican House accomplished wonderful things. They reformed the welfare system, as this bill does. They cut spending as a percentage of GDP. They produced the biggest capital gains tax cut in history. But most importantly, they balanced four budgets in a row and produced one of the greatest economic expansions in our nation's history. And, and by the way, Clinton was reelected. Now, Americans are soon going to ask themselves, are we better off than we were four years ago? And Mr. Biden's going to need a better answer than doubling down on policies that two-thirds of Americans are desperately trying to tell him have put our country on the wrong track. And that answer is right here before us today. I beg the Democrats to join us to set our nation's finances in order. I yield back.